Welcome to Bit by Bit, a series where we highlight one thing you can do to optimize and potentially run a bit better in Google Cloud. Today's topic, IP address management. It's not always easy and it's not always fun, but we always want to make sure we use our network space efficiently. In GKE standard, one way to do that is by configuring the maximum number of pods per node to effectively get smaller pod siders on nodes. So let's get to it. <laughs> So we'll start out with a GK standard cluster uh, that has only three nodes. And you can see here it's set to my current context in my kubeconfig. And so we know that in Kubernetes, um, every pod gets a unique IP address. Um, I love this implementation. Uh, and the way that it gets this IP address is that each node in the cluster gets a CIDR block from which it can assign network identities to um, the pods that it runs. So we can demonstrate that pretty quickly. We're going to describe the nodes in our cluster and grep for pod siders. OK, so we can see here that we have uh, three nodes. And so we get three ranges back from uh, describing all of our nodes in our cluster. And uh, if we quickly run a pod and grep for its IP, we can see that it gets an IP address from one of these uh, blocks uh, because this is uh, getting its IP from the node that it runs on. If we grep for IP, and we can see from the 10.44.2 block that we now get our, um, our pod's IP address. So this is so far so good uh, until we begin to run the math. So we can see the address blocks for each node listed here. And um, each of them is a slash 24. And that's 256 IP addresses. So by default, GK standard clusters and the respective node pools uh, default to 110 maximum pods per node if you never tweak that value. And some of this is for buffer needed in case of high pod churn rates as pods come and go, but you could end up stranding a lot of IP addresses in the long run if you don't tune max pods per node. So we're going to create a new node pool here, but instead we're going to set it to 50 pods per node for max pods per node. And we'll see that we immediately get a smaller range for nodes in this node pool, a slash 25. If you jump over to the documentation, you can see here that as you tweak the max pods per node, uh, you'll get a different CIDR block allocated for pods on that node. And you can see how that correlates to the number of IP addresses. And the thing about this here is that this now begins to become a planning exercise where you understand roughly, you know, what types of resources will be running on certain node pools and node types. Um, and will they run out of CPU and memory before they run out of IP addresses in terms of how many pods can fit on that node. So we're going to let this node pool create. Now we'll just take a second. Now that that node pool has completed creation, we can see we've added nine nodes to our cluster. These are all in pool one and they're ready to go. And keep in mind that uh, these smaller ranges when you tune maximum pods per node, it's all still pulling from the same uh, pod IP address range that the whole cluster gets. It's just allocating them to each node uh, more sparingly when max pods per node value is set. So we're just going to do a quick check that this worked. We're going to run the same command in grep for pod siders as we describe our nodes. We'll see the original three nodes that we had with slash 24s, but we can now see that all the nodes that we added afterwards had a slash 25, thus uh, you know, preserving the IP address space that we have for the pods in our cluster and our overall network topology. Network space is finite, and for many users, GKE isn't the only part of that network. So in your GKE standard clusters, consider reducing the maximum number of pods per node to make sure that you can preserve more IP addresses. As always, you can learn more in the links in the description below, and we'll see you in a bit. <laughs>